Hey everybody. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is JJ Asgar, and uh, I'm going to demo building a local uh, installation of InstructLab using a PKG uh, file and also a bonus control app for it um, today. Basically, uh, one of the issues that I've run into talking to the public here uh, is that uh, pip install in StruckLab is um, great for developers, but for the people that we're going to be trying to eventually get to join the InstructLab project, uh, pip install, or installing Python for that matter, is a bridge way too far um, to learn. So hopefully with what I've created here, uh, with the help of a handful of people, um, will make life a little bit easier for our end users. And then um, in theory, uh, at least with uh, InstructLab stable, uh, we can have this match against it and have a way to distribute this in a uh, effective manner. So uh, bear with me for a second and uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, so I use a piece of software called Briefcase from a company called Beware, uh, which basically packages up a bunch of um, Python apps in a really straightforward way. Uh, you can distribute it in multiple different formats. It's usually designed for uh, GUI applications that are written in Python um, uh, that you can actually export it out to an iOS, Android, Microsoft, or Windows, Linux, or Mac. Uh, but they also have support for um, uh, local machines too, or sorry, uh, uh, console, console applications too. And that's what I did here. Um, so in theory, uh, with what I've done with the PKG file, in theory, we could take this exact same code and, and deploy it for an MSI for Windows uh, or even a Debian package or a RPM also, uh, which is pretty neat. So without further ado, let's go. Um, so just to make sure that everyone sees it, uh, there's nothing here in this disk directory. Uh, that's where the actual uh, code gets uh, distributed. And if you want to take a look here, uh, if I do iLab, um, it is installed. So what we're going to do is I'm going to delete it here with my uh, my build process here. So I'm going to go into CD scripts here, or sorry, uh, bash scripts, uh, build that. Now all this code is on GitHub, so if you want to take a look at it, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And I'm going to end up removing um, iLab here in just a second, just so everyone sees it. But I want to make sure there's nothing up my sleeve here. Uh, this is all done live. Um, in the time that you watch this video. Removing the old application. Uh, it does have to build Python for us, so it takes a couple seconds here. There we go. Grabs everything we need. Which is pretty cool. Here we go. And this is live. I, I didn't spin up the video at all. So we'll see how long this takes. It's not significant by any standard. There we go. Builds it. Um, one of the challenges is that uh, right now this only works on my laptop because um, I don't have a developer science certificate. So we're going to have to talk as a, as a project to figure out how uh, we need to get this. That's what this ad hoc identity is. Um, it's one of those things, it's like 99 bucks. Um, we should probably do it for the project as a whole anyway, but it's important to recognize that this is a, a gap for this. And an ask out of this video is that if we do want to go down this farther, uh, we're going to need a way to do this. Okay. So. Still in the app package. Uh, I learned that um, this is not a dot app file where you can double click on it. Um, it becomes a package file because this is a console app. Now, just to prove to everyone again, iLab is no longer there. Cool. So what I can do is now open uh, this disk directory here, and that's that exact same file, 1031, 1031. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. And as you'll see here, um, I've learned how to uh, edit all this stuff too. As you see, I have a link to the Getting Started Guide and the Community Resources and go to users inside of our public Slack channel, which is expected. Uh, you know, license agreement, make sure that you understand what you're doing here. Install, install, and then do the installer. Right there. And then right in the files. There we 
go close. That was not supposed to show up yet. And then if I go ahead and come over here now, go to iLab. There we go. So we have a full iLab installation now of its own version of Python. Um, so it's a spe specific version of Python with the iLab bits on top of it. That seems pretty cool right now, but that's not it. Um, so if I'm going to come over here now and go into iLab bar, bar here, which is the control app that I was talking about, I run the exact same uh, build script here. I'm going to go ahead and build it. Only take a second here because it's significantly smaller. Um, and then... Build that, and then come over into dist here, and then do open here. You'll see 10.33, 10.33, double click that. As you can see, there's a different text here, which is expected. Um, one of the challenges is because uh, this is a little app, uh, you do actually have to run the app on a command line or someplace. Uh, as long as it's in the path, it works, which is nice. Um, so we go ahead and install all this, install. And go ahead and close. If I go ahead and do new window here, do iLab bar, put that in the background. You'll see now up on the top here, um, we have a nice little bot, a uh, nice little doggy with a start and a stop. What does this mean? Now we can control iLab um, serve, so you can have a, a way no iLab serve is running. So if I go ahead and do iLab. Um, start here, or sorry, this would be iLab's model start normally. Um, this just makes sure everything's up and running. And if you want to know, it actually puts everything in the config directory in StruckLab. As you can see, all the stuff is here. Uh, it gives you a nice default one also. But if I go back over here and then look at the standard error, um, this is it's up and running, which is great. So I can do um, chat. I haven't figured out a way to not have to point to it quite yet, but that's fine. So here we go. Who is Batman? There's Batman, which is pretty nice, right? But maybe I have this in a different version, right? So what I'll do is I will go ahead and stop it here. And then I will ask who is Batman again. And as you can see, I was connected to the one that was actually running. So what does that mean? Uh, you just saw a video of basically me building InstructLab uh, locally as a package. So now you can install it and not have to worry about a bunch of things and everything's installed in one directory and it's one, for lack of a better term, container. Uh, we've also built a little InstructLab control um, screen, which in theory, we can add other drop downs to it. So if we wanted to, instead of using uh, iLive chat there, we wanted to use like open web UI or something like that, uh, uh, which would be pretty cool. Then you can have like a web browser that looks just like uh, our competitors talking directly to the local Merlinite or Granite model. Um, hopefully this is interesting and hopefully people thought this was cool. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to hit me up and uh, I'm excited to see what, what people think. Thanks y'all.